I'm like procrastinating on talking about my, my family's cat. But let's talk about it. So my, <clears throat> my family is a family of cats. We all have cats. And um, if you guys remember a few years back, my parents' cat, Miko, he was a black and white tuxedo cat. He needed to have like a really major surgery. And <clears throat> I did a giveaway on here and we set up like a GoFundMe for our friends and family that wanted to help donate to it because it was a very expensive surgery and my dad does not believe in spending money on like pet vet bills and my mom really wanted to save Miko's life and so I just immediately said we're going to do it and put it on my credit card <clears throat> and you know paid it off and um, my mom did reimburse me for some of it but it you know the rest of it it's fine um it ended up being around like five thousand dollars i want to say maybe even more but he is living healthy and happy and it was totally worth it so anyway if you remember miko well miko's sister is an orange tabby cat named lily we got miko and lily and two other cats a gray one and like a peachy tabby cat when they were little kittens my sister my younger sister found them with her boyfriend on the side of the road and the mom had been hit by a car so they were teeny tiny little kittens so we took them in when we were a lot younger I had to have been like I don't know I, I don't really remember I want to say like 18 to 20 <clears throat> and she brought them to like my parents house where I was living and um, we took care of them there and we adopted out all of them except Lily, my mom's orange tabby cat. But someone returned Miko because they said he was peeing on the floor. Well, turns out he had that issue with his bladder and that ultimately he needed that surgery. Like years and years later, <clears throat> he would get bladder infections because he was like a hermaphrodite cat, meaning he either had like both male and female parts or neither male and female parts. I don't really know which one it is now. But now he's kind of like a girl. He's gone through a change <laughs> to go from a male to a female as far as body parts go. He still thinks he's a boy, though. And he, he is. He's a totally guy. Anyway, <clears throat> nothing to do with it. So Miko was returned, and we ended up keeping him. Um, he was like my dad's cat. So Lily was my mom's. Miko was my dad's. <clears throat> and then um, I had my cat Maddie and Winnie. When he's now gone, Maddie is still alive and living with my parents. And um, she's like my cat, but I couldn't like bear to separate her from my parents' house because my parents' house is like her home. <clears throat> so anyway, so Lily recently, she has to be like, I think she's 12. My mom thinks she's 14. I'm just going to go with what my mom says, but I think she's 12. Like if I do the timeline in my head of when we got her, that's how old I think she is, but <clears throat> maybe not. So she had like on her stomach, on one of her nipples, a, like a bump. It was like by her mammary gland is what they call it. So she, my mom recently brought her in and she, Lily did not go to the vet regularly, like by any means. She's been there maybe like when she was spayed as a kitten and then like maybe one or two times her whole life when she got sick and my mom would have to bring her in and get her like antibiotics or something like that. So she brought her in after she'd had this bump for, I don't know, six to eight months at least. It was very slow moving, slow growing. Um, <clears throat> my mom told them that it had only been like two months that she'd had it because my mom has no sense of time. Um, I think it's just a side effect from her medications. She's just, she's on a lot of medications for her temporal arteritis. And, um, yeah, so the vet said, oh, well, it's really fast growing. We need to remove it right away. Well, if it was the truth, it had been eight months and it was really slow growing over eight months. Now, over eight months, I mean, it wasn't like huge. It was, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like how many centimeters or it wasn't that big but it should have been removed and I told my mom it should be removed you need to have her you need to take her in you need to have her removed do it when I can go with you but she scheduled it on a Wednesday when I'm working at this other place instead of the place I wanted her to go to and this the reason why I'm telling you this is because all these things in our minds now play a role should we have had it removed should we have not 
if we had told them that it was over eight months instead of two months, would they have needed to do it this urgently? We don't know. <clears throat> but they wanted her to get it removed the next day. So she brought her in on a Wednesday, had the surgery on a Thursday. Simple surgery, they said. She's going to go to sleep. We're going to remove it. You know, she'll have a scar. She has to wear an e-collar. Whatever. There's two vet places where I go. I like one because it's really close to me. Um, and um, one because I like the hours. And so the one that's close to me is also close to my mom. And so that's where she wanted to go because it's like right down the street from my parents' house. And um, so we should have gone to the other one. The one that's open later where I've had nothing but good success I like the other place where we did end up going but we can't help but feel like it was ultimately the mistake like between or the difference between her life and her death she came out of surgery and was really groggy she wasn't really eating very much didn't want to drink not really moving a, a lot at all like she pretty much came out of surgery my video just cut out so we're gonna be doing a part two here she pretty much came out of surgery um, paralyzed but we didn't know that at the time she would kind of get up to turn around a little bit I'm getting a Facebook notification sorry if I keep looking awkwardly at my phone um, she had the e collar on, so she couldn't really move with the e collar. So we just thought, like, oh, she's not really walking because of this e collar. Um, I was over there a lot, so um, I tried to help. I didn't get to see her very much, but um, I would help with like medications and stuff like that. So <clears throat> my mom kept her in her bedroom and had her on her bed and had a little setup for her. and. Like from that surgery date on Thursday, she only made it until the following Wednesday. We ended up having to put her to sleep. And now Cat wants to come back in. Okay, Eb's back in. You coming up? You coming up? Hurry up! We're wasting time, buddy. Come on. Hello. Hello, my friend. Hello. Hello, my little boy. My little lover boy. Just sit right there. That's perfect. Very good. Okay, so. Yeah, you're so cute. You're so cute. So. <clears throat> so she came out of surgery and we're trying to remember. She wanted to hide under the bed, my mom said. She would, she would bolt really fast. You couldn't really see because, like, she wouldn't stand up she would just kind of like crawl her way really fast to a place under the bed, um, not very far away. Or <clears throat> she would make it to the litter box, apparently, this is what my mom was telling me, but she would cry in the litter box. Or she would be on the floor laying down sideways and would be crying. She would cry out for no reason. Um, they gave her a pain pill, which we eventually switched to a different one because we thought she's not really walking, she's not moving. They thought, oh, it's probably the pain medication she's not doing well on, let's switch it. So we switched it to a different one. And then um, I said, you know, what, did she not get an antibiotic? She has got this scar here. And they're like, oh, she's just probably in a lot of pain, you know, swelling in her stomach. My mom brought her back in, the scar looked fine. It looked like it healed really well. Now they did say that she'd had a lot of bleeding that first day. Um, but that she looked fine the second day. But I asked for an antibiotic and they said that they gave her Convenia, which is an injection. It works for two weeks, but it stays in the body for like 60. The problem with an injection of an antibiotic is that if a pet has an adverse reaction, there's nothing that you can do about it. If it's a pill, you can stop taking it and give them something else. But if it's injected, there's nothing you can do about it. And when you Google Convenia as an antibiotic, it has like all of these complaints about their pets dying, people's pets dying, people's pets having adverse reactions, getting really sick, um, saying don't ever give your pet this, don't let your vet give your pet this. I've only had that vet give that injection. I asked him what, the day that we had to put her to sleep 
if that could have been an issue and that I'd read a lot of stuff online. Ouch, EB, don't bite me. About um, that injection having adverse reactions. And she said, any medication can have adverse reactions. You're going to read the bad things about any medication. And the thing is that that's true. But at the same time, why were there so many of them? I don't know. I just, I would never give any of my pets that injection again. I sort of feel like that was part of her demise. Um, <clears throat> and so she brought her back in. Her stitches looked fine. She brought her back home. She brought her back in a different day to switch to a different antibiotic, or not antibiotic, pain medication, and then brought her back home. And we realized on like Monday or Tuesday that she wasn't walking. She couldn't walk. She couldn't move. You would lift her up and she would drop. She, if I like would separate her toes, like I kind of separate their toes when I clip their claws, um, like cat's claws. But if you'd separate her toes, she would kind of jerk back. So she still had feeling in her feet. And I was Googling what this could possibly be. Why would your cat not move? There's not a lot of stuff about it. Um, except spinal, you know, issues, uh, paralysis, um, fractures that would cause, per, you know, her to become paralyzed. Um, but she had reactions on all four of her feet. Her paws were still pink. They weren't black, meaning that she was still getting blood supply to them. So we thought maybe she's not paralyzed. Maybe she's just weak. That's what the vet said. And so when we brought her back in on a Wednesday, it was a super snowy day. My patients canceled and I moved my last two into someone else's schedule so that I could go with my mom. I met my mom at the vet. We sat there for like three hours while they um, <clears throat> had surgery day, but um, they were going to get her in when they could. Well, luckily it was a snowy day. Like that worked out perfectly because everybody else canceled and they had time to give her lots of attention. Now I got to let you be out again. What are you doing? What are you doing? Do you want to be in or out, man? Just get it together. You already ate. What are you going to do? Just hang out with me. Why don't you want to be around me? So they wanted to take an x-ray. Now, here's the thing. They originally wanted to take an x-ray. Hey, boo, boo, boo. Hey, bee, boo, boo. Boo, boo, boo. Do you see yourself on there? You see yourself? <laughs> he does. That was a weird laugh. So, E.B., down oh my gosh I gotta delint myself he's so much black cat hair on me so they originally when they first brought when my mom first brought Lily in and they saw that spot on her stomach they wanted to do an x-ray to see if she had any cancer or any other cysts or tumors anywhere else and my mom said no because she asked well what would you do if she did and they said cancer treatment all this treatment and my mom said I'm not putting you through that she's 14 years old um, you know, I keep saying, I think she's 12, but we're not 12 to 14. She's older. She's not going to go through it. We're not going to do that to her. We just want her to enjoy her life. She's comfortable, you know, so on and so on. So they skipped that x-ray, which is fine. I can see why we would, why she would have done that at that time. But the, when we called and she wasn't moving, um, and my mom had brought her back in and they switched her pain medication. They asked if she wanted to take an x-ray like, Oh, she's not walking. Why? And they set her on the ground. They tried to get her to walk and she would like cry in pain and couldn't move. And, um, they asked if they could take an x-ray. Well, my mom didn't want to spend the money because it was like $300 for the x-ray. So when we finally brought her back in, when I said, you have to bring her back in, she can't walk. She's like paralyzed. I Googled and I found out this thing called saddle thrombosis or saddle thrombus, which is basically a blood clot from an enlarged heart that leaves and goes to right where the front two, like the artery, where the front two legs would meet. It splits off and it clogs that so that the pet doesn't get blood supply and cannot move their front legs. Well, if another one comes out and bumps that one back into path, that one can lead down to where it will get caught around the back legs and this new one will lodge in that place. And then she will lose function of all four of her legs. So this was like the ultimate fear because this is like euthanasia, put them to sleep, or you spend like thousands of dollars trying to save your pet that could live for three months to maybe a maximum, maximum, if you're lucky extremely lucky three years, two or three years or something like that. Um, but most likely they say that they don't survive it. Like the success rate's really, really low. 
So it's pretty much like you have to put your pet to sleep. It's, it's like life ending. So <clears throat> I asked them if it could be that when we brought her in and they said we need to take an x-ray, look for fractures and cysts and tumors and stuff. And I said, yeah, do it. I will pay for it. So we got the x-ray, no cysts, no tumors, no fractures, nothing that would cause spinal paralysis. Um, and nothing that would be like that. Um, so what they suggested was giving her fluids and um, to see if she could perk up. And also that she was backed up because she couldn't go in the cat box. My mom, she couldn't move. So my mom would have to pick her up and set her in the cat box so that she could pee. But she wouldn't poop in the cat box. She hadn't gone in like a week. So that was really bad. E.B., please stop. Please stop it. Don't, don't be rubbing your face against all these things. Come on, bud. Come on. So we said yes to the enema and yes to fluids. Left. They said they'd call us in a few hours to see how she was doing. They'd already told us. If she perks up, maybe it's just that, and she's just been so weak and so exhausted from the surgery and the medications and the combination of everything that she will kind of come back to life, and she's just too weak to use her legs. But she could not even move. She, she dragged herself sideways on the floor, like one foot, and then would cry in pain to try and get to the cat box. She, she couldn't move. She couldn't use her legs. She, she would move her head just fine, and look at you, she was completely there, but could not use her legs. It was just awful, awful to watch. So, so we already knew that if she didn't perk up, what the plan was going to be. They were going to inject an injection called Plavix that was supposed to clear this other, like, haziness that they saw in her chest on the x-ray. Something that would be related to her heart. Um... If it cleared it, that was going to be a, a good sign, but a bad sign if that's, it's heart related. And if it didn't clear it, then there was going to be like really no hope, no hope or something like that. So, um, they would take an x-ray after that Plavix to see again, if it cleared up. So she didn't perk up from the fluids. They gave her the enema and they got some stuff out, but they said that she wouldn't even try to go. Gotta get some water. She wouldn't even try to go to the bathroom. She was just too weak or just couldn't use those muscles or nerves or anything. And so um, they said that they would try the Plavix. So they did the Plavix injection. They waited a little bit. They did the x-ray. They called us back in. So we came to go get her. They don't keep them. They don't do overnight care there. So, <clears throat> they, the, the vet came in and sat down in the room and told us, like, she didn't perk up, you know, we did the injection, um, the haziness on the x-ray did not go away. So, she said she'd exhausted all the possible things that they could do there, and unless we want to take her to, like, an emergency vet and have them do like round the clock care which was going to be obviously thousands of dollars to do to try and figure out what the problem was <clears throat> and my mom and I had talked about it before we went back to get her like what we were going to do if it was this scenario if it was this scenario and we were going to put her to sleep and take her out of her misery if she did not perk up and if the uh, you know if none of those things had worked in the day so they said they could put her to sleep that night or the following day and I told my mom we should just do it that night like I met her there <clears throat> so that we could not have to go to sleep not have my mom be awake all night worried about her is she okay can she go to the cat box is she comfortable you know they'd given her some pain medication um, but to just like prolong the inevitable and not have my mom sleep and just cry all night and then go back the next day and then, then have to do it, you know, when she was already there and they'd given her pain medication and she, she'd already been put through the ringer. We just decided to do it there. So I left my mom in the room with the vet to do it. I went out and I paid for the, the day, which is like $800. <clears throat> my mom was worried that my dad would be mad. So I just paid for it. Uh, she wants to pay me back, but I just think it's easier if I just pay for it. Then he can't give her a hard time about it. Don't be crying, boo-boo. Don't cry. So, um, 
she put her to sleep and my mom wanted to take her home. So <clears throat> instead of cremating her, my mom likes to bury our pets in the backyard of their, my parents' house. And um, we went to straight to Hobby Lobby because I said we're going to need a box to put her in. We didn't have anything. So um, the way that they'd positioned her in the kennel was like, why? You know, it's like they try to make it look cute. But um, <clears throat> it's like, you know, there's no good way to look at your pet when they're dead. You know, it's like there's a reason why they cremate pets. So you don't have to be scarred by seeing your pet dead. But I was trying to be brave for my mom because she was really determined to bury our cat in the backyard. So we went to Hobby Lobby and we found the perfect little box that locks. little wooden like chest box. <clears throat> And we got it home and with her and because she'd had an enema, she'd been leaking all over. They had a diaper on her which leaked everywhere and they'd taken the diaper off, but she was wet on the whole lower half of her body. So imagine the two distraught people just putting their pet to sleep, cleaning that dead animal off with baby wipes. And rags, cleaning her up. And I'm trying to be strong for my mom so she doesn't start crying. But it's just scarring. We're trying to get her in this box, and the box is like. It fits her, but it's just a little snug, so we're trying to position her the right way. And you're trying not to think about it, but you think about it later, like what you just did and what you just went through in the day. And we're just sad because... We're left with so many questions. You know, like... What if we brought her to a different vet? What if we didn't have her have that surgery? Did she need it right away? They also did blood testing. I should say that. They did blood testing after they took the x-ray and gave her that Plavix. They saw like increased red blood cells or something about the shape of her blood cells. I don't remember if it was her white or her red. I think her white blood cell count had increased and her red blood cell had a certain shape to them where the vet had also suspected possible cancer. I think that was just what she was saying to help us feel okay putting her to sleep, but that's not really what we feel was going on, you know. So I'm not saying that that is to blame, but I can't help but always wonder, was it that antibiotic injection? Did something go wrong in the surgery that paralyzed her? Um, you know, did she really have this saddle thrombus or was she just super weak and if we had taken her somewhere where she could have been like hospitalized, given IVs and fed and taken care of, could she have gotten better and bounced back? You know, but like all you can think about in that time is that your pet is suffering and you want to get them out of that pain. And so you think like this pet's had a good life, but like my mom is pretty sure that she was paralyzed. Like she, I asked her, you know, a couple days after, do you feel like we did the right thing? Do you feel like she really was paralyzed? Do you think she could have come out of it? And she says, no, I think she was paralyzed. And it's just unfortunate. We feel like we did this to her. And I am just like wishing that we could go back. You know, she's like fine, and then she's not fine within a day. And I hate thinking that like her last whole week of her life was just like scary vet appointments and being drugged up and being in pain for this pet that you love and you took care of to have such like a horrible last week. I hope she wasn't in as much pain as we think she was, but losing a pet
because like losing a family member it's not easy so we put her in that box and I'm like what are you gonna do the ground's frozen my mom had a special place that she wouldn't bury her in their backyard up kind of by the fence where the other cats had been buried but the ground is frozen so in the meantime she's underneath their deck in that box in a bag and in like another bag buried in snow in her own little frozen cat igloo luckily we've got a lot of snow because I'm like as soon as it gets warmer all that snow is gonna melt what are you gonna do you're gonna have to put her in a freezer like it just was really poor timing for it to happen in the winter she could have just buried her if it was in the summer sorry but you know I was just trying to help my mom and so she's there I know that's like a super weird thing you guys probably think it's crazy you should have just cremated her but that's what my mom wanted to do so I wanted to do what my mom wanted to do so <clears throat> that is it I didn't want to cry talking about this uh, I'm glad I waited this long because I was like such a mess before it's just really hard feeling like you have so many regrets about these decisions that you make and I'm just I'm like how am I gonna do this for my cats how am I gonna make the decision with my other cat Winnie he was older He'd been diagnosed with kidney disease and he lived for several years without any treatment on it and was just per perfectly fine. And then he went downhill over one week where he just didn't really know who he was, where he was, and we knew he had no quality of life anymore. Like that was, that was it. But he was fine until then. It was just that whole last week where we, we saw that he went downhill. And that was an easy decision. Excuse me, I mean not an easy decision, but you know what I mean. You knew this is the time but this was different and I just don't wish it for anybody I hate when people have to put their pets down abruptly for something awful and the thing is I had a patient who had just told me that he had to put his dog to sleep because they had a like a cyst or something in their pancreas or something like that that had burst some I don't know if it was a pancreas but it had burst and um, he had to put his dog to sleep, and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. My parents' cat just had surgery. I hope she's doing well. She's not really moving around a whole lot, and I didn't know, like, little did I know I was going to be putting her to sleep, like, the day or two days after, so you just never know. Anyway, that is that. She'll have her spot in the backyard, and I know she had a good life. It's just... She just didn't have a good ending, you know. It's just, and I just feel bad. And I think about it a lot. Like, it runs through my mind. What we could have, all these things we could have done differently. And, um, we'll just never know. We're just never going to get any answers. But... To some people, a pet's just a pet, and they're like, oh, whatever, move on. But it's like a family member, you know. It's kind of like losing your family member and never getting the answers. And then it's a really, really hard thing to be the one to end your pet's life. Like, to make that decision. But, you know, that's the part of being a pet owner. That is the ultimate, hardest decision that you'll have to make with your pet. That's your responsibility alone that you take on when you take a pet is that you have to be the one to be strong enough to end their life when it's time. And so that's just that's just what goes along with it, unfortunately. So it sucks. This video is super long, so I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go eat some breakfast and um, de-lint myself because I'm covered in black cat hair. But I think that's it for like life updates. <sighs> this video is so long, so I, I don't think I'm going to do another one of these anytime soon. Uh, maybe just short like vlogs or something like that, but um, sorry for rambling and um, I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you in my next video. All right. Bye